Hello, my name is Apache Knack, and I am going to discuss the diversity in New York City. Imagine a place where you can go shopping, and, and uh, in the same place you're in, all the other countries in the world are shopping with you at the same time. Or imagine a place where you can walk down one block and see an Irish neighborhood, or walk down another block and you'll be in a Russian neighborhood, or walk down another block and you end up in a Himalayan neighborhood. This big, beautiful city is the biggest melting pot, and I'm going to discuss how the population coexists. Not only have I researched this extensively, but growing up in Manhattan, I got to experience it firsthand. So not only is this ethos based, but it's personal. Today I'm going to list what I've researched and hopefully educate those who have never been there. Now everybody pay attention, because I'm going to take you on a journey to a place that I call home. I like to give a diverse overview of New York from race to religion, from food to music. And first, let's talk about race and diversity. According to New York City government, the census in New York City is 8,213,839. 35% white, 24% Hispanic, 29% black, and 10% Asian. The city is home to over 200 different countries. Despite all the, different, the difference among races, people still manage to coexist with each other by working and living together. With all these um, na nations living together, you get to um, experience all the different kinds of foods. According to the uh, City Guide for Dining, New York City is the only city in the country where you can try any food you want from any different country in the world. If you enjoy Asian food, you can go to Chinatown and try some Chinese cuisine, try some Thai food, Vietnamese, Korean, or the most popular, Japanese, and try some sushi. If you enjoy Hispanic food, there is everything from Puerto Rican food to Chilean food, Brazilian food to Cuban food to the most popular, Caliente Cab, a Mexican restaurant in Greenwich Village. Try some European cuisine and go to an Irish pub and try some corned beef and cabbage. Try some Romanian food, Portuguese, or try a gyro at a Greek restaurant. Or the most popular, try some New York style pizza. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> try the falafel out at a Middle Eastern restaurant, or halal beef platter at a Muslim food car. Or if you like Indian food, try the curry, chicken, and basmati rice. Another great thing about New York City is the variety of different religions you're exposed to. The first one I'd like to mention is the Catholic religion, and the many beautiful handcrafted churches they have. The biggest one is St. John the Baptist, New York City is home to the oldest Gothic-style churches in America. The next one is the Jewish religion. New York City is home to over one million Jewish people. It has the most synagogues in the United States. Throughout the state, there are Hasidic communities like Curious Joel and Harem. Another big religion is the Muslim religion. There is almost 800,000 Muslims that occupy the city alone. One of their most beautiful mosques are on 96th and 97th Street, and that is worth seeing. Last but not least is the Buddhists and the Hindus. According to the New York City government, there are as many Buddhists and Hindu people as Muslims. And they are very humble and kind people, and they belong to the, a big part of the labor force in New York City. My favorite out of all these topics is a different kind of music. If you enjoy going to an Hispanic club, try going to the Coca Cabana downtown. If you enjoy good old rock and roll music, go to some of the biggest names, go see some of the biggest names in music at, at Roseland or CBGB's. If you enjoy Caribbean music like reggae or soca clubs, Travel over to Jamaica Avenue in Queens and try, the, and try plenty because they're all on the strip. New York City is home to the biggest nightclubs in the country like the China Club, the Tunnel, the Limelight, Studio 54, the Exit, and my favorite, Webster Hall. You can get any different kind of music at any of these clubs depending on the theme of the night. Now let's go further back in time and I will discuss how this great city began. I would like to go over how our great city started and who built it. According to the population of New York City by Ira Rosenwake, New York City was founded in 1620 by the Dutch West India Company. All the bridges, tunnels, and old buildings were built by the Irish, Puerto Ricans, Italians, and other immigrants. According to New York City government, the immigrants make up 43% of the labor force to this day. Let us see how interesting some of these different groups are. The Chinese, Russian, and Muslims, I mean the Chinese, Russian, and Koreans make up the biggest growing population in the city. First, I would like to start with the Chinese. According to the New Immigrants in New York by Nancy Fawner, there were over 72,000 Chinese people in 1982. Now in 2007, there is over 700,000. If you venture off to downtown Manhattan, you will get to see Chinatown, which will give you a good idea of how they live, the wonderful restaurants, the fish market, the garment district, etc., etc. The Chinese people believe in strong educational background for their kids, and they are very hard workers, and 85% of them work seven days a week to provide for their families. Now let me talk to you about the Koreans. According to the New York City government, the city is the second Korea, has the second largest Korean population in the world next to California. Not in the world, in the United States. Um, there's over 105,000 Koreans in New York City. The percentage of Koreans are less skilled in, in English, but more educated than the total adult population in New York City. 
they are family oriented. They are family oriented people. They provide housing for their families, and they stick together as a unit. According to the Census Bureau, they are the least affected by poverty in New York City. Last is the Russian population. What makes them unique was the refugee situation. Due to the change that went on in the separation of the Soviet Union, the city tripled in the 1900s annually, and over eight to 10 refugees that came to the city are from the Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Belarus, and other Soviet republics. They make up 50,000 in Brooklyn alone, and 500,000 in New York City altogether. Every Russian person I've met in the city is very humble and grateful to be alive, and live in a country that has democracy and no communism. Now you know why New York City is such a melting pot, and why they are so diverse, in conclusion, there are many things to learn when you go to New York. I've explained to you various foods, culture, and religions, and I told you how it began, how people live there. I also informed you of some of the biggest ethnic groups who live in the city, and this is my hometown. And I hope that one day you will go there and get to experience the city that never sleeps, and stay for at least a week or two, and have a good time.